oxen. And they and I was I was working. I was not on the farm staff. I was you know in the buildings. And they said we, you know we have to plow with the oxen this weekend. Would you like to stand by the field and and tell people about them while so we can be out there? It's like oh yeah. And then and then they let me try it. And I was hooked. I mean I just I just this was this is my hobby. You know sure there were there are way easier ways to do it, which is why. They're not logging with horses and cattle today. You know, right. That's why they have skitters. Uh, well, because, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. I thought, why would you want to do it the hard way? Because and, and I did it for fun. I did it as a hobby. Now I have a friend who lives. Who uh, Dave does not have oxen anymore. He lives over at Genesee Depot, um, down by Waukesha, and he okay. He had a team, and he actually he did some logging for the Nature Conservancy, because they had they. The land they were they were returning some some pine plantations to Oak Savannah, and they needed to log off the pines, and they didn't want the skidders to come in, so they were they were they were you know optioning some horse loggers, and the horse loggers looked at the at the hills and said no, we can't do that, and I don't know I, I forget how Dave's connection was he looked and said oh yeah, and and again, that that's sort of that New England you know hills, but you know this the the horse loggers wouldn't touch this, but the oxen can get up and down those hills. And so Dave would go, I helped him a couple of, he would go every weekend and they would, you know, with all the volunteers, he had the volunteers trained how to work around the animals and, you know, and so yeah, he, he, hauled, he hauled logs off their hills. So are but, they doing that out in Old World now with Jackson? We, we, do, we do our logging, our logging is primarily uh, for demonstration. Right. We, 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 we cut, we, tip, we haul with horses, mostly with horses, with, with some of our volunteers. And we, we have a sawmill come in, it's the first weekend in October this year. And we turn, we, we will turn 70 logs into boards, uh, which, which then we say, it's 90% it's, it's red oak, some white oak and burr, um, a, little bit, a little bit of maple and walnut, that sort of thing. And then we use, we use that lumber for our programming, buildings, fences. Um, I, I cut a bunch of six by nines last year because we needed axles. And so those are all axle blends. And so that our logging at Old World is is that for with the horses and the oxen. And again, we will we will skid the logs out of the woods, cross haul them onto the wagons, and then haul them out to where the, the where we'll set up. Um, and so, oh yeah. Can you teach oxen to back? Oh yeah, you can teach oxen to back, and dra and draft animals, horses too, hate to back. That is that is not in, in the in the wild. They will if they need to go, they will turn and go. Um, and with horses with blinders on, you know, backing they can't see. And and cattle too, they cannot see directly behind them. And so, if if you can back them, that's an act of trust on their part because they do not know where they're going. So they are totally trusting you not to get them into trouble. And that's you know when I said um, how I pref I prefer oxen to horses. One reason I do is that, and if you read the old accounts, people will talk about this, when you drive oxen, there's no physical control. You know, a horse has reins and a bit in its mouth. You have physical contact. With oxen, you walk next to them. I have a stick. But if I say, whoa, and they don't pay attention, what do I do? They will keep that, they will go wherever they want at three miles an hour, but you know, you know, they, they won't stop. One of the best pieces of advice I got was, whoa is not a request. <laughs> And, but that is the first command they learn. That is their most important command. And when, and so, but backing is next. And if, and when you watch someone back, at, back a team, how well they do it shows the trust between the, 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 the driver and the team. And that's what that, that's what that ox, it, it's with horses too, but it's more so with oxen. Because there's no physical control, the relationship I have with my animals is based on trust. They trust me not to get them into danger. And they remember. If I do something, they, they, they do. And if, if I do something stupid, they will remember that if they get hurt or, or scared. And the next time that comes around, it's different. You know, it's a whole, it's different. So you just, you always, you always, where every time you take them out, it's training. But backing is a beautiful way. In, and and you, so when someone's backing and everyone else is going, uh huh. Oh, oh, been there, done that. <laughs> and so yeah, that, it's always fun to watch people back animals. But yeah, they, and, and usually the way you train them is, well, what you do to back them is you typically drive oxen from the left side. Um, and that's just tradition. Um, and, but when you back them, you stand in front and you, you tell them to back and you just crowd them a little and they will back up. That, that's, that's how they're trained to do it. Is it always 
They, you, you want them to go as a pair, not not seesaw, just like horses. They do, they do, and you can you could you can tap them on the knees with the stick, and you'll tap one, and and but they get yeah, and see it's easier for them to work as a team. They realize that quickly with the yoke on that if one's doing if one's backing up, the other one's getting its neck twisted, and so they they, they will. But but yeah, backing and the, the easiest way to, to train them because what they want to do is spread their butts out when they back. So the easiest way is you you get them against a fence. And you back them so that one can't put its butt out, and then they'll back. Then you learn to back straight. And backing is a—that's a skill. Um, that that again in in a woods, you know, where you've got tight corners, the ability to back and and see the other thing with with oxen because you're you're driving the front side, you can spin them in their own length. So you can get out of incredible tight situations, you know, by wedging them, and they can squeeze together. You know, they will. You know, they will press together. One will go a little in front to get you know between things. Now, the other thing, you know, we're talking about teams of animals. And you, you, know, you can picture, you know, they're pretty wide. They turn like a big Buick. You know, they're, they're not, you know, they can turn in their own length, but not with a cart behind them. And so what, what, another thing that works very well is a single ox. And my last ox, I had that team, and then I, I trained another team from calves, but about, they were about six months old, and one died. And so, and it was the best one. So I, I had four or five calves, took the best two, and so now I had the second best, and all I was left was like the third and the fourth. So I'd rather than make a new team, which is also very hard to do because these two had been together, um, I worked it as a single. And we skidded a lot of logs with him too. And you know, a single ox is only this wide. And you can go anywhere you, know, you want to with that animal. And they learn. They learn to snake through little, you know, snake through areas and you know, go in and out. And so yeah, we, and the harness is a little different, but we, it's, more, it's more like a horse. But yeah, we skidded a lot of logs singly that way too. What? Do you eat them when you're done with them? Um, the, the, team, the, the team that I had, um, one of, I did not eat them. They were my first team. And I just couldn't, you know, they really are pets. But, and, and so one, one, one of them developed arthritis at, at the age of 14. And arthritis is incredibly common with cattle. Um, and they have big joints. And so he was be, basically became a three-legged ox for a year. He could get up and down, and we, we just kept him on aspirin so he wasn't in pain. And, but, but we knew one day he couldn't get up. And there's nothing, he weighed a ton. There's nothing we can do. So you call the vet, you put him down, and then we called the neighbor with the back hole. And we dug the hole next to him and tipped him in. And then covered him up. And the other one, then, then the, his, his teammate, often, often when one dies, the other will too. Um, again, they have been together since they were a week old. And now they're, you know, this was 14 years. They've never, you know, they've always been there. So the other one, he spent about two weeks looking for the other one. He would walk back and forth because you know in the paddock, you know, always looking around the corner. And we we fed him, we fed, we stuffed him full of food and, and gave him loving like nobody's business. And he was okay, he was. And then he again, he just at 18, cattle lived to be 15 to 20. So 18 is very, you know, we're, we're talking 90s to 100 there. And and just he, you know, he lost weight, couldn't keep muscle on. And then again, one day he couldn't get up. And, um, and so again, we called the vet, got the neighbor with the back hole, and we buried him in a different spot. <laughs> so, and, and so, but, and then the, but you talk about eating them, that's where the story was going. With the single one, um, I, I worked him till he was seven years old, and at, when he was seven, that's when I started full time at Old World. I didn't have time to work him anymore. And, you know, and it's like a, you know, an animal that wants to be worked, because this is what they do. They get bored if they're not. And then they, they lose their training, and you know, you've got kind of a rambunctious animal that's weighing in at, this one was weighing in at seven. He was a Jersey Holstein cross, weighed about 1,700. And, um, and he just, he needed to work. And so I just didn't have time. So, so we, we put him in the freezer. And, and my, my friend who worked for the Nature Conservancy, people would ask, because what, what Dave liked to do, Dave liked to train oxen. He didn't really like to work them so much. So when they were about three years old, he would put them in the freezer. And someone would ask him, how can you eat something you know? And his response was, how can you not? <laughs> you know, I, you know, I know where this animal has been. I know the life it had. I know what it ate. And, and now I'm going to eat it. And that, that has always been the plan from the beginning. So Stephen, we, you know, we ate Stephen for a good year and a half. And, but that, again, that, 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 with, with oxen, that was always what was done with them. You know, they were a dual purpose animal. You worked and then you ate them. So then you had a lot of ox tail soup. Well, you only get one tail off them, <laughs> but, but it's a lot of steak and a lot of hamburger. And it's not the most tender meat in the world, you know, because that's a well-muscled animal. Tails are, though. They, yeah, but, 
and but but again, you you know, an adult adult animals are just they're not they're not as tender as the young ones are. But but yeah, that and most most people unless unless the animals are very old, like my first team, or they're specifically really attached to them, they will yeah they will put them in the freezer. Plan Plan B, we call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's nice to know the name of your. It's nice to know the name of your food. Not, yeah. If you're not working them, you still shoe them. Um, if uh, for shoe for shoeing oxen, oxen are typically shod for traction. Horses horses have to be shod to protect their feet because you know a horse's foot it's got that frog you know in the middle, and so um, like one of our horses at Old World has fairly flat feet, so we have to shoe her so it keeps her you know that little half inch above the gravel, otherwise she'll go lame just walking on the stones. But oxen are typically it's only because they have a hard hoof it's typically for traction. I never shooed mine. Um, you would do it if you were working them on asphalt, um, just like you do with horses. Or ice, or you know, in the winter time they would they would be shot. And I never work mine hard in the winter. At Old World, we wait till the roads are clear of ice before we take them out. Um, but 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 you but if you were if you yes you would keep them shod when you now if you weren't going to work them in the winter you would take the shoes off. Like logging you know logging companies often would you know if in or I should say in the summer they would work in the winter and then they would often just let their animals graze you know on their in the forest you know in the in the summertime and then the shoes would come off. Because they're going to lose them anyway in that time, so why waste them? And when you shoe when you shoe cattle, they need two shoes on each foot because they have those cloven hooves, and the shoe is a crescent moon shape instead of that you know a horseshoe shape. They're nailed on the same way, but they're only nailed on one side on the outside of the hoof. Um, nailed on the same way, a cat, bovine hoof is thinner is thinner walled than a horse, so you need thinner nails. You have to be a little more direct. You know you have to you have to aim better. Uh, when you put an ox shoe on, but the problem it's it's a pain to shoe cattle because they don't stand well on three legs, so they have to go in a shoeing stock. And if you know if you know horses, sometimes they do too. Uh, but a shoeing stock is just a big open framework where they you, you the oxen the cattle go in and then you put their big slings that go under their belly. And what happens is you tie their foot down to work on it, and when that foot is up, they just go limp. So they're supported by the slings. They also do it. They will also do it on tilt tables these days. If you know, if you know, like when when dairy cattle get their their feet trimmed, they, they, there's a table and it, it's vertical. You you walk the cow up to it and you know strap them in and then you tilt it at, you know flat and then you can work on their hooks. They'll do that as well. But cattle don't. They can't be in that position very long. That's real stressful for them. So so with the with the shoe. So you have to go in a shoeing stock, which is which just takes longer. You know, and it's a little harder. So you only shoe them if you have to. Um, but again, again, for, it's it's always for traction. Yep. With their weight, what about wet or sloppy ground? Um, they work well. The, I've never seen ox. You know, like horses would have those swamp shoe. You know, they would have those big swamp shoes. I've never seen that for cattle. Um, their their hoof splays out a little more because it's cloven. Um, when I've worked oxen in swampy ground. If it's up to their knees, they don't care. They can walk through that. I, I think they could they could walk through through mud that they could that the load would not drag through. So it was it was it was never I've never heard of it being an issue. Read about it being an issue. Um, but again, you you could again if you could pull the load, they could they could they could handle it. Yeah. And but did you ever work with multiple teams? I did. And they're <laughs> not well. Oh. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a great picture of multiple TVs. My friend Dave and I, we hooked, it, we hooked them up, and my wife was driving them. And she's got, this, she's got the goat, and she's holding her head because she just whacked herself on the head with the stick. But multiple teams are into I've done it a couple times. And actually, and we, Dave and I did a little logging one year with that. We, he brought his team out to our woods, and we hooked on some big maple trees. We didn't get them very far. Um, because what, what happens is when you, when, you, when you hook multiple teams, you hook them not abreast like you ride horses. You know, if, like if you see the Amish out plowing, you, know, you, can have, you can have seven horses abreast. With cattle, though, it's always two by two. Because of the turning radius, you know you can't turn three cattle abreast in any kind of in any kind of space. So they're always two by two. But the problem is because of the, the simplicity of, again of the harness, there's just a chain running from yoke to yoke. And when they start, it's like you know, when a train starts, a freight train starts, bam, bam, bam. That's how that's how an ox team starts. And you always have to keep after the front ones because they learn very quickly. If I walk half a step slower. I'm not doing any work, and the wheel and the wheel team gets real cranky, 
And so you want to keep, you have to keep the front ones going. So that's what it takes is, you know, you have to constantly work on the front ones. It's a whole different system than just driving two. It can be done. And it's really fun to see. Now, the, you know, you've seen the logging pictures where there might be multiple, you know, teams like that. And again, it gets very inefficient when you start doing that. But if that's what you had, that's what you used. Um, the other place where that, where that was often done is when people were moving west. When the covered wagons went west, it was oxen and mules that hauled them. And people would, you, you're maybe, maybe four, four animals to a wagon. That was, that was typical. But you, got, you know, and everyone, you would travel in convoys. But when people got to a river, you know, they always went to speci specific fords, because that's where you cross. But the rivers were wide, especially if you hit them after a rain. So what people, you know, the, 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 the wagon trains would just camp by the rivers until you had enough wagons there, enough animals. And what you would do is you might hook 30 teams and you know five wagons because the, 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 the lead oxen had to be climbing out of on the far bank before the wheelers went in. Because if they're swimming, they're going downstream. And so you had it, and so what they do is they'd haul a couple wagons across, swim the oxen back, rest, do it again, you know, take five more over in the afternoon. And so, yeah, that, that was another place where they would use those sorts of hitches. Did, in your research, did most of the time, was it a dead uh, skin, or was it when they used a bull devil, or some place oh, that Sure, they, yeah, the question is, when in pulling logs, do you just right. drag them across the ground, or with skids, or, it was, it was typically with skids or go devils. Yeah, that, that's always, and that, in my, in my experience too, that is by far the easiest to do. Um, the, the best time to skid logs is when the ground's frozen and you got about two inches of snow. Because <laughs> the, the problem with deep snow is I can't keep up with the animals. You know, because I, the snow that I can't walk through quickly, they can. Oh, really? And so, yeah, they're, they're better at it. They have longer legs than I do. <laughs> and, so, um, and so that, but yeah, but yeah, you, you want to get the front end of the log up. And, yeah, and just like anything else, yeah, it's skidding is so much easier. And, and if you can make it easier for them, they're happier to do it, and so they'll, they'll, they'll go longer. The, now, one other thing with, with oxen that's really interesting is, and horses is the same way, they, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to step on things. You know, they know what's under their feet, so that's why they'll step over logs. But, you know, you always hear about, if, you know, they'll step over you. If you fall down, they don't want to step on you sort of a thing. Well, we were skidding, we were skidding, ground was frozen, we had two inches of snow, and we were skidding a log out of the woods, and there was a, there was a point where, to come out of the woods, they had to go up just a real short little hill, and they put on a burst of speed. And so my wife was driving them, and they put on, she, you know, she, you know, she told them to go. They put on the burst of speed, and she tripped. And they, she tripped in front of them. They, they were putting on their little burst of speed. She tripped in front of them. The goad went flying out in front, and I was behind, and she fell right in front of them, and they stopped. You know, from from a from a speeding up run, to, you know, they just stopped right there, and they just looked at her. <laughs> it's like, what are you, you know? And so she got up, dusted herself off, and off we went. But they're, you know, they're, and horses will do that same sort of thing. They're very, you know, that's another thing. They're very safe animals to work from, as, as, as draft animals go. Um, because again, they don't want to, they don't want to step on things. Um, yeah? In the heydays of logging in the North Woods, most of them converted from oxen to horses. I've always read that it was because of speed. Do you agree with that? Yes. That, that was the primary reason to use horses in logging was speed. Um, um, oxen, uh, when in farming, there, usually oxen and horses were not used together, um, you know, on the same farm. It might be, you know, a little, but in logging they typically were because there were some jobs the oxen did better. The rough terrain, a lot of, a lot of slash on the ground, um, really big logs that you didn't, you, it would, you know, you, you would use the oxen to get it from where it fell out to the skidway and then you put the horses on because they could haul it faster you know to to wherever you were wherever you were decking them and but yes there were more horses and they went more to horses because because of speed and also and and the other reason too was as logging went into the 1880s and 90s the railroads went farther up because originally they were logging out in the wilderness well they couldn't the only way to get feed for the horses was was by bringing it in. And that was not cost efficient if you were bringing it in by wagon. But when you could bring it in by railroad, then you could bring in the grain that the horses needed to work. But cattle didn't. Cattle could eat 
garbage and work. And so that would, that, yeah, they, they wanted to use the horses, but they couldn't. And when they finally could, they had the opportunity. Yes, they absolutely changed. But there was always some oxen because, well, because some people didn't want to change. Uh, but but yeah, there was always some work that it was that was easier for the oxen to do. Um, but yeah, as far as speed went, horses. And that's, that's, why, that's why oxen fell out of favor in farming. Because what happened was, in the, starting in the 1830s, and especially then after the Civil War, farming mechanized. And all the machines were designed for the speed that horses walk. Oxen, three miles an hour. Horses, six. And so that, that little speed difference. But so oxen couldn't use the machines efficiently. And you, know, you, you cleared your land with the oxen because they're really good. You know, if, you have to haul, if you have to pull a stump, you don't want a horse. Because you know, if you've watched horse pulls, the, the, the horse will take that, they'll take that step back and then jerk the load to try and get it going. Well, that works for a pulling competition. If, if you're doing that day in and day out, harness breaks, horses get bruised. But, but what the cattle do is they just lean very slowly to get the loads moving. So they would clear, do that, the heavy work that didn't need to be done fast. That was with oxen. But once you had fields and wanted to do some farming, you got horses. Yeah, because, and again, the, because the machinery was designed for them. Yeah, one thing that's kind of interesting is the, when that horse machinery first came out, especially plows, I mean, we're all familiar with the walking plow behind. Well then, the sulky plow is the one that you ride on. It still can be single bottom, but you rode instead. And when they first came out, one of the farmers, you know, farmers are incredibly conservative. They, they never want to change, but as soon as you can show that it makes more money, you know, then they will. But one of the arguments against sulky plows was the horse is doing enough work. It's got to haul me too. Because they the walking is what they did. So it was their sons that got the sulky plows <laughs> and did it the new way. But, but yeah, speed, that was, always, that was always the thing, speed. Now the other thing I, I will say too is that watching, watching ox pulls and horse pulls, again in New England when you go to the fair, they pull oxen um, in addition to horses, is that horses will pull more. Um, horse harness is much more efficient at transferring power than, ox, than ox yoke is. Oxen will lose up to 40% of their power, of their pulling ability because of the yoke. But the advantage was the yoke was simple. Anyone could make one, you did, and, and, and repairs were a breeze, as opposed to, and it was much cheaper than horse hunter. So you were willing, you always had more power than you, than you could use, so so what if you lost 40%? Um, but, and so, you know, now where was I going? Oh, the power. And so horse harness is much more efficient at transfer, oh, that happens all the time. <laughs> horse harness is much more efficient at transferring power. Horses have longer legs. So a team weighing, uh, two teams weighing the same size, the horses will typically, and I'm talking about dragging it across the ground. You know, the horses will typically pull one and a half times their weight. Um, the cattle will only pull their own weight. And that, that's very, and I've seen that you know, over and over again in you know, watching the pulls. And in, in New England, in, in, in Wisconsin, they, the horse pulls, they typically pull against what we usually call an eliminator. Um, you know, it, and, and so what they're measuring is the, the pounds of pull. You know, it's a dynamometer is what they're pulling against. Out in New England, they, they load weight, concrete weights on a stone boat and they're pulling dead weight. And so you can easily measure how much they pull. The other thing that, that, that's fun to watch with, and again, you see the speed thing again and how the animals pull differently, is the other pull that they have that I think is the most fun to watch is with horses and oxen, they'll have a team and they weigh them, and then on the stone boat they load half the weight of the team, which is very easy for them to pull, but the competition is you have five minutes, how far can you go? And so there there's some strategy, you know, do you, do you take the big burst of speed right away? You know, and try and get the distance and then have the animals wear out? Or do you, do you, you know, slow and steady wins the race and it all depends on your animals? And, and there, there again you see, the horses are simply pulling farther, a farther distance, pulling the same relative weight because of their harness and their legs and their, 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 inherent, their inherent speed. Right. So, oh, yeah. Well, take what you, you just said. Is it possible that if you were to have a horse team and an ox team, and you're gonna work them all winter, Mm -hmm. rather than just one event and a pull, right. that the stamina of the ox would outdo the horse. That, that is, so, I, I have never seen that, no one works them that way these days, but, but I have read, yes, over and over you find accounts of that. Um, and you also find that um, in, in accounts of heading west. You know, you know, the, everyone went west, and the horses. You know, some some people did have horses pulling their wagons, and so the horses would go over the horizon very quickly. And a month and a half later, you'd catch them. The oxen would catch them because the oxen is that slow, steady won the race with cattle. That was that was the name of the game. The other reason now, cattle can run. You know, horses can canter. You know, but 
but you but the thing with with oxen is you don't never want them to run because you have to walk next to them and you and if you're not next to them they're not under control so you you always have to stay with them so you never wanted them to move more than three miles an hour because you were doing all the walking too another another a good piece of advice i got for driving horses is if the horses run stay on the wagon because you can ride as fast as they can run <laughs> and and you need to you need to stay with the team now i haven't had to prove that one yet but 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 yeah that's it yeah no, the other, the other thing, you know, I talk about these, these pieces of advice. The other good one I got with oxen, and again, this is that, that, that trust relationship that you have in the verbal commands. One of the best, best pieces of advice, too, was um, you don't have to shout. And I was, I was a little loud because I was nervous. This is when I was first starting out. And, and I can talk. <laughs> That's not, but they say, you don't have to shout. They got big ears. And it's, like, and it's true. And when you watch, um, there's, a, there's a competition at the New England fairs for adults. And what they do is they hook up a log scoot, which is just a big sledge on run. You know, it's a big. It's, it's not a, a flat stone boat. It's it's basically a sledge on runners, on big wooden runners. And they load a couple of logs on it. And the competition, it's a timed course, and they have to you know go through cones and around obstacles. And if if your if your ox pays attention to the cone as it passes it, you lose points because that team is not trained well enough to ignore you know the, the, what's going on. But those but. But those guys, they also say light use of the goad, which means don't touch them. And so these, these, these guys, they're dry, and, and women too, it's not just guys, uh, they're driving their animals, they never touch them, and they're down there whispering in their ears. You know, you never hear a word they say because they're down there literally right next to the ears just whispering to their animals. And the animals are, you know, scooting along. And, um, and, that, and again, that's a, that's a course that's mimicking what would go on in the woods. Which in New England, you know, a lot of these guys are loggers, and you know they're doing they're doing it. The other thing with that competition, again, to show you what you know, what the animals have to do, um, is at the at the end you have to you you cross the like the finish line, and this and you stop, and for every inch that the the, the front edge of the scoot is away from the finish line, you're dedu you're docked points, because you want that scoot to stop there, oh, wow. and and it's very easy. It's it's easier. I found just find it easier to stop an ox than a horse. Because you just, you know, whoa, and bam, they will just stop, stock still. Yeah. Or you could be sauntering down the road and go, whoa, and then they'll take two steps and stop. You know, it's, it, it all depends. It's all about, it's all about voice. The, there was a good description of, of, of using an ox voice. And, and I've got one. <laughs> it carries. You don't have to shout, but it carries. And the other, the other thing, there's a great account. There's a man named Drew Conroy who drives oxen out in New Hampshire. And Drew, oh, he's in his 50s now, but, but he, wrote, he wrote the only book on how to, how to train oxen. And so he's been doing it since, you know, forever. Um, and his wife asked, he, he was out driving his animals, and he, he, you know, for the afternoon, he came home and put them away, and he came in the house, and his wife asked him, what's the difference between the command, whoa, and whoa, God damn it. <laughs> and, and there are there are those days. <laughs> so yeah, but but again, as, and it's it's like, like I said that that personal relationship you have with the with the animals is one reason that they were so good at doing what they did. Um, you know the the physiology of the end, like again working in the woods, ox yoke very simple. Um, you know, you know, cheap, easy to use. The animals again can turn so sharp and so. But that physically, but the reason they will, will, you know, they they can physically do those things. But the reason they will do them is because they you're telling them to, and they trust you, and they know you, and you know them. You know what they can do. I remember my team. I had them at Old World, and we were skidding logs up to the. We had a, a big um, circular buzz saw. Cir well, no, circular saw powered by a steam engine, and we were skidding logs up to the the um, loading ramp for the mill and I had a big log I knew my team and I knew that this was about the biggest log that they could pull and so I you know and, and you've got a hundred people watching you and so I start up and they they didn't start evenly they seesawed back and forth I stopped them immediately because we're having a bad experience and so I, I just you know I went up I talked to them I backed them up a step got them lined up and I knew you know, it's like this is, you know, they're, they're going to do it or they're not because I knew I knew what they could do. I knew they could do it, but they ha it had to be perfect. And and so I, you know, I got I took a few minutes, got everything lined up, said a little prayer. I gave my best ox voice, whacked them on the butt and bam, they pulled it beautifully. It's like ah. the other thing I've learned, too, is when animals do something wrong, I take full responsibility. You know, it is my responsibility 
you know, that they, they ran away or did something like that. But when they do something right, I take full credit. <laughs> I made them do that. <laughs> and usually that is not true. But, but no, that the reason, you know, again, the reason that animal, like I say, the reason animals can do what they do is because it's the, it's the team, sir. And there are good ones and bad ones. And, and you can, okay. And if I'm as good as any nine-year-old girl from Vermont, you know, hey, I'll take that. But, but it's fun. It's, it's so much fun to watch other people drive animals. And because, yeah, because we're all sitting there, you know, drinking beer and talking stupid. And you know, it's like, but we all know we've been there. We, have, we, we, we feel for you <laughs> because we know exactly what's going on. And so no, it's yeah, it's just it's, again, it is just a lot of fun. And and again, in you know, you know, with with the you know logging you know logging industry history, you know, you've you've seen the pictures of the oxen, and they were you know they were used heavily. Um, and again, be, their virtue was was strength, stamina, the ability to eat really bad food that a horse would starve on, and and the fact that they could they could pull those loads, and and they weren't fast, but time wasn't always what you know wasn't always about time. You had to get that log out so then the horses could pull it away. And the other thing that you know you would find you know I, I, I say I've never read this, but again knowing ox people, what you found in those logging camps is if you ever look at the pictures, you know you know they're always the ox guys are always standing there really straight next to their team, and you know down what they wouldn't they would not use a horse team to save their souls. And I'm sure they got in fights about it, you know, when they were drinking too much afterwards. Because they're, you know, the ox people, no, we're, do, we're doing ox and the horse people, it's like, you have, we get to ride, why are you walking? And so yeah, but everyone's got partisans. And, and because, because the animals are treated so, you know, drive so differently, you really like one or the other. Yeah, and I like the oxen better, I just do. The other, the other reason I just, I'll say, this is a, this is a personal thing again, which, which lets me, it's, it, this is why I drive oxen. Um, I, again, I was always interested in draft animals, but the, the one reason, and I remind myself on a bad day of this, is again, this was at home, and we were, we were, we were doing some logging in our woods, and it had, been, it had been a long day, and we were tired. I mean, all three of us, we were tired. We, we, it was about a half a mile trip home, and so we're walking along the road, and it's late in the evening, so you got that low sun with those really long shadows, and I'm walking along, you know, just exhausted, and everyone's hurting, and I'm looking at the shadows, and I realized that the people who built the pyramids saw this same shadow. And so suddenly I'm connected, you know, directly connected with five, six, seven thousand years of history. And you know, they would have recognized you know, what I was doing. And that, that is why I do it. I mean, that, that kind of connection that I have, that I know I have with the past is, one, is, is the big reason that I drive these animals. Yeah. And they're just big, sweet babies. <laughs> so the, the team we have at Oldwood right now are a team of, uh, they're across. Um, they are um, Red Holstein and Brown Swiss. And they are, I can barely look over them. Um, they, and it's all leg. They're two dairy breed, you know, two cr cross dairy breeds. It's all leg. They weigh about 1,700 pounds each. And they, they are, and they're, they are, Six, they'll be seven. They'll be seven this fall, and they are lively. They're, we're talking that's late 20s, 30, you know, early 30s, and they are lively. They are a working team, and I am the only one who can keep up with them. And so it, they're fun to drive, and it's a it's a real working team. Uh, and so, and they're they're not sure. They don't like getting petted on the head by anyone they don't know. So can I pet them on the side? Go over here on the side. <laughs> And, but yeah, that, that's what we're driving, that's what we're working at Old World right now. Pete and Charlie are their names. They were trained by a 4-H boy in New Hampshire. When, when Old World needed new oxen, I, call, I called my contacts and said, you know, Old World's, you know, you know what we need. We, you know, the, you, know you, we, you, you got us our oxen last time, we need a new team. And so they looked and we, we drove out. We, we, we looked at a couple teams, test, again, went out with the trailer. We knew we were coming back with a team. Test drove them and we bought it. We, we knew what the prices were. Um, the, the price, I get, if you know horses, horses are expensive, you know, ten, you, know you, can, you can drop 10 grand on a team of horses like nothing. Um, oxen, the base price is the, the, what you could ship them for, beef. Um, and so, uh, and beef was high that year, so we bought them for $4,000, which for a beautifully trained team of animals is dirt cheap. Um, again, they're not horses, but, you know, but for four grand, we came home with a beautiful team. Took them about a year to get used to Old World. Because everywhere we went was new, and they're just on high alert. You know, they're looking at everything. And then after that first year, oh yeah, we've seen that before. You know, we can do that, that's not a big deal.
Why? I buy her a tea and she's going to take care of her. Well, see, that's what I, you know, kids, little ki kids are always, oh, I want, oh, they're so beautiful, I want some, can I get some oxen? And so I always say, you know, they make great pets, but you got to have a shovel. 50, 50 pounds a day. Is, yep. Uh, now this, well, this week I was I was telling some people this weekend at, at Old World, you know, if you if you come if you come on on the weekend, um, Saturday or Sunday, um, we're doing uh, this weekend is dedicated to our heirloom gardens. Um, we've got s several dozen garden different gardens, and because you know that this this house is 1860 German Northern German, you know Pomeranians lived here in 1860. The garden is 1860 Pomeranian. I mean, our, our historic gardener, every garden is specific in time and well-researched. So, so, this week, so if you come this weekend, it's all about the historic gardens. And what led me to this was the manure, because I'm doing the talk on Saturday and Sunday about compost. Oh. So I'm going to have, there's going to be a pile of horse manure and cow manure and sheep manure. And so I'm, yeah, I'm talking about how long you have to let that compost and what we do. And yeah, so I get to talk about poop this week. <laughs> Someone's got to. <laughs> 40 pounds a day? 40, 50, yeah, about 50 pounds a day. Which is why when you're talking about those big hay for you, you get a thousand cows, you, you need some land to spread manure. Oh, yeah. yeah, it just, and it doesn't, it doesn't stop coming. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't stop coming. <laughs> yeah, you think milking twice a day is bad enough. <laughs> Shovel it. Yeah. But, but again, yeah. But again, that, again, you know, the other thing that, that's interesting is when, when, you know, when we're talking farming, and you know, Wisconsin, they were wheat farmers, and then they went to dairy. And um, the, the thumbnail sketch is the Yankees came, farmed wheat, ruined the land, sold it to the Germans, who then got dairy cattle. But what, you know, wheat farmers, they understood what fertilizing the land meant. I mean, but, but, they, but they couldn't, because when you're farming wheat, one, you're cash cropping, so you want to farm as much and as fast as you can. But, in a wheat operation, you don't have enough animals to provide fertilizer for the land. That only happened when they got dairy cattle. When you have 30 or 40 cattle cooped up in a barn all winter, you've got enough manure for all your fields. But with wheat, you didn't. You just didn't, ha you couldn't fertilize the land, so they didn't bother. And, and at that point too, in that time, when that land wore out, there was always more land out west. And so you just, you gave up that land, you just moved. You bought new land, plotted under, and planted more wheat. So yeah, so but yes, the manure was important. Always, <laughs> always is. <laughs> I say any any other questions or but you know I was gonna say if if you are planning on coming to Old World, um, you know again we're 600 acres. Um, you you can't see it all in a day, but as part of the ticket price, um, you get a we have trams, we have motorized trams that will take you around, and and they you know they run they run often they go to all the sites. You tell the tram drivers where you want to go, and they'll tell you where you know they'll tell you which vehicle to get on and you know and head on out. So getting around is very is very easy to do. Given the weather forecast, how much is inside? Um, when like when you when you, you you get to the German area, what you have is three farms which are all about two or three hundred yards apart. So you will get wet, but you can go in the house and, and, and dry off a little bit. I mean, there, you can stay inside, but you have to walk from, from place to place. So yeah, on a, rain, on a rainy day, bring an umbrella, raincoat, or, you, or yeah, you will get wet. And so we're, we're hoping not for rain, because again, this is, we're highlighting the gardens, which of course are all outside. Uh, but you know, one thing, that's what, what, we like, what we like about Old World, especially if you work there for a while, is it's big enough, you know, that all, you know, the farmstead, the buildings are all set in real space. If you've ever been to the Henry Ford Museum, you know, gee, I never knew that the Wright brothers lived right next to, you know, Thomas Edison. Um, and there, you know, things are just lined up. But it, at Old World, the, the distance between the farms is how far they would have been apart. The buildings are the right distance. So you've got all that space. And, and you know, when we're, when we're doing our thing, on a nice day, that's great. But when it's raining, you, you, you understand what it was like. Yep, yeah, you get a little wet. And on these, on these hot summer days when it hasn't rained for a week, we, we we're perfectly happy getting all wet. <laughs> but yeah, again, you'll, you know, the gardens are, are what's on display. We've got, uh, we have pigs and sheep and chickens and horses and cattle, cows and oxen, um, you know, out in, out in the pastures um, and on all the farmsteads. So they, you know, they'll be out and about. Um, this weekend, because I have to do a manure talk, the oxen will probably not be out, but I'm really hoping I can get my guys to, to get, get some horses out and just so that we can drive around. Because again, it just, you know, the animals, the animals add life to the place. I mean, you, you can look, 
Old World was originally conceived as a museum of immigrant architecture. And so you've got the house with furnished, but without anything, without something in it, it's dead. You know, without people living there. So that's why, you know, the interpreters are cooking, you know, they're in there cooking. And they're cooking the meat that we butchered last fall. They're cooking the vegetables that they got out of the garden, you know, 10 minutes ago. So we, we try and make the houses come alive like that. And also with all the animals, that too, that brings, that just brings the place alive. And so when we can get our animals out, we're gonna walk, even if we're just driving around for exercise, it just, it really does bring the place alive. So we, we just, my, at, when, as, as the historic farmer, I said, go take horses out this weekend. Oh yeah, not a problem. I mean, that, that, is, not, that is not a hard thing for my, my people to do. Sometimes we can't because, you know, you, know, you gotta go shovel manure today. Uh, but yeah, getting the animals out is, is, a, is a joy. Yeah, yeah, there's a yeah, there's a choice, right? Take horses out or shovel manure. I usually don't give them the choice. Uh, what I do, to, what I do is uh, today we're taking the, go, go take the horses out. Yeah, and, and and you know and and the other weekend we we hauled hay, and what we buy our hay in big round bales, and so what we did is we we took the round bale to a parking lot where the visitors can't go. And they, they took a chain, they were pretty bright, I wasn't there. They chainsawed that round belt, 1,200 pound round belt. They chainsawed it apart and got it loaded on a wagon in 20 minutes. Then with the horses, they hauled that wagon through the site to the barn where they pitched up into the mouth. Now, they had to handle it all twice, you know, but, 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 but again, we're, we're, we're showing how we can't show you making the hay, but we can show you, you know, from that step on. And, and so yeah, so that, that, there's a lot of behind the scenes sort of stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that, but see, uh, hopefully that's what, you know, that's what you'll see if you go. And I'm really hoping the weather, the weather's good. But no, if you, if you have any interest in gardening, this, yeah, this is the weekend to go. Um, you know, the, there will be, there will be people, you know, gardeners at each, in each garden who are able to talk knowledge about the plants and why and the wherefores. The other thing they're doing, if you're interested in cooking, they are each, I think it's pretty much each house, each you know, like farmstead, is will hand out recipe cards because the, all the recipes are historic as well, and and they've made really nice little recipe cards. So they'll be handing those out this weekend too. That's a new thing, and 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 we, so many people say you know we'll, we'll be cooking something, and they'll say, can we try some of that? I'm sorry, no. You know, again, it's that we're not exactly a modern kitchen, <laughs> um, but the 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 answer that the the next line is, but we get to eat it. <laughs> And, and feeding the farmers is sort of, it, it, that's done. And so we, we know who makes the good pies. And, uh, but, but, but yeah, the food, the food that's cooked out there is, just, is, ex, is excellent. It's not, it's not healthy, and it's fuel. You know, it's not particularly healthy, and it, you know, but it's tasty. And, and it's getting, it just brings the place alive. And I, you know, I tell my people too, you know what, if someone offers you a piece of pie, you are teaching history by sitting on that porch and eating pie. You know, and because that they did that too, and uh, but yeah, yeah. So in between time, getting the horses out, go eat some pie, <laughs> and then shovel manure. <laughs> so how are we doing for time? Or <laughs> okay, does, yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Anything I didn't cover? Um, I'll always vote for oxen. I will tell you that <laughs> they're not they're not as fast. But I, like I say, I prefer for all those reasons I talked about. You know, that that personal, you know, that that personal contact with them, the 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 magic of telling something this big to do something, and it doesn't. And the other th the other thing with draft animals is what we we are making these animals do things that they normally wouldn't do. That in 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 a natural world they would not ever do, which includes backing up. Um, and the fact that we can get them to do that is what makes this, you know, this, this relationship work. And with cattle, they're herd animals. They want to know who's on top. They want to know their, their pecking order. And what they're trained to do, we, 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 we exploit that. We're a herd of three, I'm in charge. That's what they learn from when they're uh, this tall. And, and the ones that learn that become good oxen. And the ones that don't, we eat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but again, like I say, I've, I've been driving oxen for you know, over 20 years. And I would, you know, I, I, I don't have my own anymore, but I can go out and drive them anytime I want <laughs> and get paid for it. <laughs> so it's a, it is a great job. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, any other, any other questions? Otherwise, I will. Well, thank you. All right, thank, and thank you very much. I really, no, I, 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 yeah, please, I hope to see you Saturday. And again, I, re I really appreciate the opportunity 
to, to come out here and, and, and talk about oxygen. I mean, you know, I, like I said, I can, I can do this. <laughs> and again, yeah, thank you for reading the article. It was so much fun to write. It was, it was the, that is the first article I have ever written. And, when, <laughs> and my, my, I was like, no, and that's 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 me, Pete, and Charlie on the front. <laughs> no, it was I I, I, I was like to say they I, I I believe they published the article because I th I think it's a good article. Yeah, I really do. I mean, I think we got the cover because it's old because it's old world. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, it is. It is nice. And no, it was interesting because you know I I always wanted to write it. This is something I know about. And so you can all the all the issues of the of the magazine of history are are full text online and searchable. So I went and I typed in ox. I got 480 some hits back. And then I but then I went through and I realized no one has ever written an article. Okay, now I know what I'm going to do. And so yeah, and it fit. And again, it's just it's such a part of any agricultural history. And Wisconsin had it. And again, a very short period of time, 40, 50 years max, which is why I got the title, Generation. They were here for a generation. Um, my people had them in 1860. They had two working oxen on their farm, along with like three milk cows and eight sheep and you know 20 acres of barley. And then in 1870, they were gone. They didn't have any more. You know, they got rid of them because they were farmers. They, you know, <laughs> they went and got the next best thing. But no, it is fun. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for dinner and you know, and the great conversation. And you know, I really do appreciate it. It's a lot of fun.